Excellent work, Wiso. Here we go. Good morning. It is, it is great to be in God's house with you guys today uh, as we begin another week with uh, chapel. As is our, our tradition here, we'll start the week by rising and saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. We'll start our worship following the words of uh, morning devotion. God our Father, each day is a gift of your grace. Your mercies are new every morning. Guide our steps by the light of your word. Shield us from harm and keep us from evil. Better than life is your love. Put joy in our hearts and praise on our lips. Hallelujah. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Ben Karlovsky, and I teach in the theology department. I teach sophomores and juniors. I also get the privilege of coaching soccer here. The section of God's word that I want to look at with you comes from the book of John chapter 6. Now, before Jesus said these words, he has just fed the 5,000. He's just said things like, Unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you'll have no part of me. And then these words. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching, who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh gives counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the spirit and life, yet there are some of you who do not believe, for Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You don't want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. This is God's word. Throughout that reading, maybe you saw the word life. And maybe there's been some questions that have been asked of you like, how's life? Or maybe you've thought about the good life or how good is life? So I need you guys to do me a favor this morning. Could you, for 10 seconds, put in your brains your picture of the good life? Can you guys do that for me? What's your picture of the good life? Y'all have it? Maybe your picture of the good life is this past summer as you crowded with tens of thousands of people chanting Bucks and Six, right? And you could feel the energy and you experienced the joy of winning a championship with the entire city of Milwaukee. And you would say, man, that's the good life. Maybe, maybe your picture of the good life is something completely different. Maybe your picture is just a day at the lake. Of course, it's summer, right? No deadlines, no worries. It's just a warm summer day, and the water feels so good. And, and you're out there with friends and, and laughter and music. And after a long day on the water, and as the sun sets, you reflect and you say, man, that's, that's the good life. That's, that's living. Maybe your picture is different. Maybe, maybe your picture is just sitting around a table with a good meal and family and friends and laughter and jokes. And after the meal is cleaned up and you think back and you say, man, that's, that's, that's life. That's a good life. Or maybe, maybe your picture isn't that specific. Maybe you're just thinking like, maybe if I could just 
build a better life for myself. I would, I would take this out and I would put that in. I would take out all of the disappointments and failures and struggles and I would fix it. I would, I would put in happiness and laughter and joy. That person's gone, that person's in, and you could just build, Wisco family, this, this better, this perfect life that you could look back and you could be proud of and you could say, man, that's life. But if you paid attention in the reading, Jesus says something interesting about life. Because in all of those pictures that I just described to you, we are at the center of it. And we are building that better life. And our happiness is built on things like laughter and friendship and the good times. But Jesus says, life according to the flesh, if you caught it, he said, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. The, anything that in, involves us working, to, like, it's nothing. And it's called in the beginning of our reading, and it says that's a, that's a hard teaching. You know, we, we, we prefer easier teachings. We would love to have easier teachings, teachings that would say things like, the better you are, the happier you will be. Or the stronger your faith, the better life you will have. We would love easy teachings. But Jesus confronts us today with a difficult one. And Jesus confronts us in his word with difficult teachings. Teachings that say, you must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. And, and God allows struggles and pain and worry. And he says, keep your eyes focused on him. It's, it's not an easy life. And that could lead us to a question that would say, is it worth it? Is, is Christianity worth it? Is all of this worth it? And before you all say, yes, of course, Mr. Karlovsky, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Think about what you have to give up. All of those desires that you run towards and that you seek every day. The Bible says, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. The Bible tells us to stand up in the face of trouble, even though everyone else might be going in one direction and you know it's wrong. Are you willing to take that stand? Is it worth it? How about your picture? Is, is your picture this room? I ask all of my students this on the very first week of school. I ask them, if you didn't have to be here, like in my class, would you be? You guys remember that question? Like if you could walk out the door and I would give you full attendance credit, would you sit in class? And, and I, I ask for their honesty. And, and, and many hands go up and say, you know, if we, if we didn't have to be here, we wouldn't. So I think today, Christ confronts us with the same question that he asked the 12. You don't want to leave too, do you? In faith, what do we confess? Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Because Peter knew there were bigger things than life here on this earth. Peter had an eternal perspective. He lived with end times urgency. He kept his eyes focused on the joy of the crown, the joy of heaven. And that's been something I was thinking about as I was preparing for this message. Uh, in a minute, we're going to sing the hymn, O Church Arise. And I was thinking about how verse 4 of, of that hymn changes my picture. Because I want joy, and I want happiness, and I want those days at the lake. But the truth is, our dinner tables maybe aren't as full as, as they once were. There, there might be people in our lives who you no longer see, or, or who have, have died. 
And in those moments, maybe our our happiness, our joy is lost. But verse 4 of our hymn gives me eternal perspective. It gives me an eternal prayer. And and here's what verse 4 says. It says, so spirit come, give strength for every stride. Give grace for every hurdle that we may run with grace to win the prize of a servant good and faithful. And then it gives this picture. As saints of old still line the way, retelling triumphs of his grace, we hear their call and we hunger for the day when with Christ we stand in glory. That verse, the words of John 6, help me think about, help me process the question, you don't want to leave too. Do you? My prayer is that with Peter we can boldly confess in faith, Lord, where can we go? You have the words of eternal life. And that's why we do what we do here. That's why we spend every morning in chapel. That's why all of your teachers model his love. That's why we spend time in faith in prayer, and we struggle together, and we confess together because we support each other. We help each other keep that perspective on the cross. So as you run your race of faith, know that God gives you strength for every stride. Know that there is grace for every hurdle. And when you struggle with the question, should I leave? Are are you going to leave too? No where you can look. Know where you can draw your strength. And with Peter, we all can say, where can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Amen. We'll sing together the hymn, O Church Arise. When we get to to stanza four, I would ask that you would please stand for stanza four as the church we sing together. prayers, we'll offer a special prayer for those who are affected uh, by Hurricane Ida in the Gulf. So let's pray. Lord, we pray for your peace and protection over those near the Gulf who have experienced trouble and hardship during Hurricane Ida. Please grant them peace and protection amidst and following the storm. We pray for those who are experiencing this natural disaster who don't know your name. May they learn how great a name it is and find rest and solace and salvation that only comes from you. We also pray for the relief efforts in those areas. We pray for our churches in Louisiana and New Orleans. Where there is destruction, help them rebuild. Where there are questions, give peace and understanding. May our churches swing open their doors to the needy and give comfort to those who have lost much. May people see the light of your love from those who seek to help those in need. And Lord, help us to see that true life is only found through you and your son, Jesus. Amen. Now, students, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. Now, students, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord in gladness. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.